Okay, so here we are in my very messy shed, and now we're going to put more power through this thing. More power! <laughs> put a much more suitable primary on this thing. So this one is 18 turns. I've done that because we're going to be putting more voltage through this, so that's a much more acceptable primary. And surprisingly, even on the low power tests, I get about the same amount of output with this primary as I did with my 7 ton primary, so that's going to be like that. That's what I'm going to use. I put all this plastic sheeting round between the primary and the secondary, so it won't get any arcs going from the secondary to the primary, because that could really ruin your day. Everything else is set up on this shelf. On, well, not shelf, but this, uh, whatchamacallit? It's not a shelf! It's uh, something else. I don't know what it's called, but you know. I've put a heatsink on the rectifier. And I've taken out the filtering capac well, the smoothing capacitors, because, you know, I want to run this DC, but not smooth. That way it'll be much easier on the output transistors. And I'm going to power it off the full secondary of this transformer which is about 70 volts, and that's going to be about 100 volts when it's rectified, you know, 100 volts peak. And I've got this other camera over here, which for some reason had its light on just then, I don't know why, and that's going to shoot the action, well, that's going to do a close-up of the sparks, whereas this camera is going to do, you know, the wide shot, so if anything does explode, we'll be able to see that too. So this is on 100 volts supply, let's see what we get. Oh. Helps I turn the thing on. Okay. Oh, that's good. That's very good. All right. Let's unplug. I want to do a heat sink. Feel the heat sink. It's cold. It's all cold. Okay, we're gonna have to go again because this stupid camera. This stupid camera here, I just tried to play back the file, and it deleted everything. Can you believe it? So the previous run you saw was only the footage from my HD camera. So, let's see that again. Sort of an instant replay, and this time I'm not going to delete the files. I'm not going to try and play back the files. Alright, so this is low power. Looks pretty good. Medium power. Oh, actually, I've just put it into high power. But yeah, look at that. That's awesome. Yeah. Okay, now this is the big one. We're going to run this off rectified mains now. Still going to ballast it through my heater, which is here. So with this switch on, that's going to be about 500 watts. With this switch on, that's about 1,000 watts. With both of them on, that's about 1,500 watts. Now this is where something could explode, so I'm staying back. Hmm. Okay. Well, that's not exactly what I was expecting off rectified mains, but I think... I think the resistance of the heater's kind of limiting the current here, so... Alright, that's a thousand watts. Right, now we're going to run the full 1500 watts through this thing, and I have no idea what's going to happen. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, we're doing another run here, but this time against a black background so the sparks stand out better. So, I'm going to plug in and turn on. Let's just make sure that it is doing stuff. Yep, okay. Right, so let's put this on its full power. Alright, that's good. I love it. And now, one more for good luck. It's 
scary. Okay, it's a little bit later on, so it's a bit darker, so we should be able to see the sparks a lot more easier. So I'm going to plug this in. And let's see what we get. Let's make sure it's working first. Oh, if I turn things on. Yep, okay. So here we go. Full power in the evening. Okay, so after that, I thought I'd leave you with the schematics. So, here is the schematic of the driver circuit. And as you can see, it's gotten a lot more simple since my original design. So, anyway, basically what we've got here is a CD4046 PLL chip connected to two gate driver chips, one that inverts and one that doesn't. And the tuning is pretty much all done by the feedback antenna. Even though I've got tuning right here, the PLL really takes care of most of it and I had that set to about quarter of the way throughout all the tests I did in the shed. Never needed to adjust it. And here we have the output stage with the four IRFP450 MOSFETs and all the protection circuitry necessary to make it work and not explode. And yes, the gate drive transformers do, ha do indeed have two primaries because I get a much better waveform that way. And this is the power supply for the control circuitry. Now this looks a little bit weird the way I've done it because this transformer here is the only one that I could find that would give me the right voltages and enough current. So I've got the 6 volt tap powering this fan here through a single diode rectifier. So it gets about 8 volts when it's rectified and that's, you know, it's enough. And I've also connected this 6 volt winding and this 12 volt winding in series and fed that into the rectifier so that gets about 18 volts and when that's rectified that 18 volts AC becomes about 25 volts DC so that way there's plenty of headroom for ripple and then that's stepped down to about 13.5 volts by this regulator here and since that's a switch mode regulator I don't have to worry about it losing a lot of energy as heat because switch mode is a lot more efficient. And finally, this is how the H-bridge was powered. As you can see, there's almost nothing to it. We've got live coming in, there's a 1.5 kilowatt ballast, which is my heater, then a rectifier, a couple of capacitors, and, well, that's pretty much your lot. Now, these capacitors don't actually smooth the waveform, but what they do, they stop RF getting into the rectifier and blowing it up, because, you know, you really don't want that to happen. Now, for those of you living in 120 volt areas, you might want to use something like this, with a voltage doubler. Now, the only downside to this is that, well, it's going to be a bit more like constant wave mode operation, but, you know, if you've got a transformer that steps up the voltage, then you can then go and use that circuit if you wish, but you might want to try this. So, anyway, there we go. There is my PLL full bridge solid state Tesla coil. And I hope you like this video, and until next time, goodbye.